catastrophic failure of Japan's Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant following the March 11th earthquake and tsunami spotlighted a terrible risk of generating electricity with nuclear reactors. It also focused renewed attention on the dangers of keeping the reactor's highly radioactive spent fuel and temporary storage on site. Over the past six decades, the world has built some 400 nuclear plants and none of them has a permanent, long-term storage plan for this lethal waste. Linda Gunter is an international specialist at Beyond Nuclear, a Washington-based environmental group. The nuclear waste problem has never been solved and there's a strong possibility that it never will be solved. And therefore we talk about it as the Achilles heel of the nuclear industry. Around the world, nuclear waste sits at the reactor site either in deep, water-filled concrete pools or in a steel reinforced cement cask located just outside the reactor buildings. And in the case of the Fukushima design, which is the GE Mark I reactor, of which there are 23 in the United States, that fuel in the pool is sitting on the roof of the building outside containment, vulnerable to attack, to breach, you know, if there's any kind of an accident that opens up that fuel pool, that inventory gets released to the environment. That's a lot of radioactivity. Nuclear industry experts say the dangers of on-site waste storage have been greatly exaggerated by critics. The Nuclear Energy Institute, NEI, is a major political voice for the industry in the United States. Adrian Hamer is executive director of NEI's strategic programs. The Nuclear Regulatory Commission has uh, estimated it's safe for uh, another 100 years at the site in the locations where it is, whether it's in the fuel pools or whether it's in dry cast storage. This is a dry cask or reinforced concrete container of nuclear waste at the San Onofre nuclear plant located in Southern California. Inside that thick cement casing is a large quantity of radioactive waste just walking distance from the reactors. It's just a fraction of the 70,000 metric tons of nuclear waste that the U.S. nuclear plants have produced over the past 60 years, according to the U.S. Government Accounting Office. NEI's Adrian Hamer says because of recent events at the damaged Fukushima plant, where exposed uranium waste has leaked large amounts of radiation, there is renewed interest in the United States in moving waste from 104 operating reactors at 67 sites around the country out of water filled pools into dry cast storage and then to an interim off site storage location. I think with the events in Japan, it's important that we get on with uh, and move forward with this interim storage uh, activity as soon as possible so we can start moving fuel away in, into, a sa uh, into a safer location as opposed to having it spread, it round, spread around at 104 or 67 actually at uh, different sites. In 2002, the U.S. seemed on the verge of a permanent nuclear waste storage solution. The U.S. Congress gave the go-ahead to the Yucca Mountain Project to develop a deep subterranean nuclear waste burial site about 160 kilometers from Las Vegas, Nevada. The project has been controversial from the start. Critics say transporting nuclear waste to Yucca Mountain would be too risky. In early 2009, after several billion dollars had already been spent constructing the underground facility, President Obama called a halt to the project. The future of the Yucca Mountain nuclear waste site remains unclear. Adrian Hamer at NEI believes Yucca Mountain is still a viable option and attempts to close it, he says, are being driven by political, not technical issues. But until such large permanent storage sites can be developed, the world's 400 nuclear reactors will continue storing their nuclear waste close to home. And according to Chris Flavin, president of World Watch Institute, an environmental watchdog group in Washington, the waste storage issue is a big problem for nuclear power advocates. The fact that the Japanese were actually storing nuclear waste, which they had no other way of dealing with on the site, and that that has sort of contributed to the severity of the accident and the long-term consequences, I think that that is going to be you know, one of the, the big additional drags on nuclear power going forward. The average life of a nuclear power plant is 40 years. According to the Nuclear Energy Institute, 61 plants in the U.S., more than half the total, are applying for relicensing 
to extend their operations for another 20 years. The Institute is now studying the possibility of requesting an additional 20-year extension, which will bring the reactor's maximum life to 80 years. Approval of these licenses might well hinge in the public's hope that the nuclear waste storage problem will eventually be solved. This is Sulima Palacio, VOA News.